Okay, guys, welcome back to Browns Film Breakdown. Joined by Coach Bentley. Coach, how you doing? Doing well. Good, good. Hey, we're gonna take a uh, we're gonna take a look at a player we looked at earlier in the year when his responsibilities were slightly different. Jannard Avery. Ever since the Christian Kirksey injury, we have seen a switch in his responsibility. More pass coverage, more drops, and and throwing situations. So we're gonna try to to take a look here at what he's doing, how he's doing. His grades have dropped because of it. It's a harder task. Uh, in terms of you know responsibility than just simply rushing the passer, so I think he went through a rough stretch earlier in the year, but I think in the last two weeks here he's gotten a little bit better. So let's take a look. We're going to start Carolina game last week. Uh, we situationally it looks like third quarter, a um, couple minutes left in the third quarter. You're going to see Avery here at the hash mark here. Um, hopefully you guys can see that mouse. He is. And most of these clips are going to be lined up in the edge. So when they, they, they like to drop him in the situation that allows him to be that fourth rusher, uh, stand him up and bring him off the edge. So then when they've dropped him, it has not been from a traditional three or four yards off the ball. It's usually from a uh, tackle box up on the line, edge threatening position. So uh, let's walk through this one, Coach. we got three, three by one, tight splits. Uh, you know, he's, he's dropping on the hash. Let's look at – scheme here we're just kind of going to go through it and you talk me through it and um you know we had some banter back and forth on what this might be so go ahead yeah sure they've they've been lining up in this little odd front and like you said i mean he's a stand-up end essentially is what he's doing rushing and dropping a little bit more with injuries and all but i i like this little odd front they get into and and normally even jabril i think is down here on the bottom he's even sometimes tighter Mm -hmm. bringing two guys off the edge or maybe a showbert and collins up the middle with stuff and playing cover one or, or like a three under three deep kind of thing out of it too. But, um, you know, rep wise, I, I think his, he's getting more reps at this. He's getting better at his drops. He's got good feet, good hips. Um, the thing I like too is he's, he's getting his depth fast, um, whether it be opening and running or in this case, it's a little more backpedaling because it's more straight back, but he's, he's got good vision. He can see, um, Cam Newton and with the shoulder and where he's throwing, then he has a good break, downhill break, attacking the near hip. Making it yeah. yeah, and I, I like that he doesn't chase here, right? He's got a crosser passing in front of his face. You know, you get a crosser, typically someone's going to exchange. And like you said, Coach, a good job shooting through that upfield leg to, to bring him down. So it's all about where his eyes go. Recognizing the crosser, you can see his head whipped to the left two times quickly. Right, I wish the screen were just a little bit wider because he does a great job of recognizing the cross coming to replace, shoots through. Right so, there, yeah. I think he's off the back hip just a little bit, maintaining leverage too, and that that prevents the cutback yep. and giving up even more yardage on a on a second and ten play. You know, line them up, make them line up, and play third down on third and five or third and three or whatever it is. But you know, it looks like that that receiver for the the Panthers is trying to cut back a little bit, but that's yeah. that's good. Good job knowing his leverage. I've known, uh, or I've noticed that he's he's a really good for his size. Uh, really good slow down, get your feet underneath the open field tackler, which is good to see. And it's uh, solid too. It's not just a take out the ankles kind of tackle. Yeah, I I wholeheartedly agree. It is. It's a part of his game as he gets more comfortable with pass drops and being in the right spot. He's going to make plays. So. Um, Next play, just a little bit further on here. I think, I think a little bit further on. Nonetheless, uh, looks like three by one again. Same sort of alignment, just flipped. Browns are going to bring the corner here, right? Going to rotate into cover two, right, Coach? Yep, yep. It's a variation of cover two. It's still cover two all overall. You're getting too deep out of the corner and the safety. The safety up top's rolling down to play the curl flat, and then they're bringing the, the boundary corner off the edge uh, to be their fourth rusher. Absolutely. And I think that as, as a big part of what I like is he's dropping to – is he dropping – so if you guys are watching, what, talk me through, Coach, his responsibility in this cover two. Look, he's right here off the edge again. Yeah, you've got – here, let me get my drawing tools here. Yep. Um, your, your curl flat – let it roll a little bit, Jake. Yep. Um, you've got your curl flat defender down here. Um, what was well, – I don't know why I have an arrow all of a sudden. Um, let's see here. Looks like Body Calhoun down there. there. Yeah, there we go. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, we've got we've got our curl flat defender out of the outside backer nickel, uh, whomever. Yeah, and Body. 
Um, you've got the, your strong hook curl right there out of, out of Gennard. Um, you've got your deep middle uh, Mike linebacker deep drop out of Schobert there. And then you've got your, your hook curl weak side here with, with Jamie Collins. So I, I like that he gets back so fast. I mean, he's mm -hmm. athletic enough. He's quick enough. He's got good hips, good feet. Um, he's playing with good leverage out of his pads. And, and he's, he's pushing off, letting that 12 uh, receiver, number 12 receiver go inside, like, like we said, kind of the last play and redirecting off the quarterback's eyes to the next guy um, outside of him. And because he's getting depth so quickly and so well, I mean, he can reset, reset his feet, keep his feet under him, redirect and, and break on that ball and break it up. Yeah, he's, he does a really nice job, like you said, at least getting in Cam's vision right here with his hand on. I think that's DJ Moore getting his hand on and then reading eyes because I think far too often, and I think the next play we look at, it'll be uh, some issues I have with spot dropping, but um, they spot drop a lot. They find grass mm -hmm. instead of finding routes, but he does a nice job here of finding a route, right? He reads eyes, yeah. reads eyes, gets it, and it's nice timing, perfect and, play. And, and part of him doing that is because I think he's getting depth so quickly that he can do that and, and redirect and find that receiver, whereas something you, we mentioned pre-show here, uh, previously we covered three that some of those guys a couple weeks ago against maybe the Texans were kind of real lazy in their drops and – and that's when it seems like they're covering grass because they can't move. They can't redirect. Yeah. Yeah. He does a really nice job staying in that solid athletic position. At no point do you watch his rep here and think, you know, there's lazy or lethargic at any point. So, and if you're going to get there on a, on, I think Cam's one, two, three rock throw, one, two, three rock balls out. Yeah. You got, you got to get there with some decisiveness mm -hmm. and speed. So good to see in Carolina game. Let's jump to the Denver game. All right, jumping into the Denver game, let's look 646 left in the first quarter. Avery, as Coach had pointed out, had missed the first series in terms of, of they just didn't play him. Who knows what was going on? But this is his first run of consecutive plays. And it looks like Denver's in uh, 11 personnel, too tight – or sorry, a, a wing tight end. Uh, they're going to run a flood concept. So they're going to send number one vertical here, outside release, turn this corner shoulders – I'm going to send number two to the outside shoulder here. If he's collision, he's going outside shoulder. If not, he's working upfield, and then he's on. If it's third and ten, which this situation is, he's going to get two yards past the sticks and work down the line. And then you're going to get a sort of delay release here um, in this situation since he has no edge pressure threat. Tight end's just going to release quickly to the flats. So you're getting what flood concept is three levels of options. Browns are going to run a twist stunt on the inside from their linebackers, uh, which is it's, I think it's Schobert and I think Collins both come or does Collins mm, bail? I no, it looks like Schobert and Peppers. Peppers. Yep. And then uh, three deep, three under. Coach, talk me to it. Yeah. Well, like you said, they're bringing five and that leaves you six in coverage. And one of your options when you do ring five and leave six in coverage is that three under, three deep type uh, zone drop. Um, and in essence, you've got body out here on the hash drop or the out, outer number two. Mm -hmm. You've got the post drop, the middle third. That's, that's our boy Avery here. And then you've got Collins on the backside um, on, the, on the hash drop out there. So, you know, speaking specifically to Gennard, you know, again, kind of like we said earlier, good, good break, good drop and all, but not maybe as uh, aggressive as what we saw against the Panthers. You know, this – first series he's in I really thought his legs maybe weren't under him maybe that's that elevation aspect of Denver I don't know but um you know third and ten body gets kind of carried off with those two verts a little bit so it puts him a little delayed in breaking up on the on the flat route it's a good concept by Denver but I think you know third and ten you want to hit him they hit him at the 45 and that that would have set up a fourth and three and a punt and and one of the big things in a game like this you got to get off the field and that's really any game but Definitely here. So good effort. Still got there and, and made the play with body, but obviously make a better solid solid tackle. Get him down. Get yeah, him. probably some angle issues too. Yeah, kind of kind of rounded it a little bit. Like I said, I just felt like his legs weren't under him this first series he was in. Yeah. Um, but but I think he came around as it, as it kept going on. Yeah, let's look at the next one here. So we can see the uh, end zone view will give you a good look at where his eyes are. I just think that we need to – sometimes, and I talked about it there at the Carolina game, sometimes it's a little bit too hop and, and find grass. And in this situation, if he's if he's an underneath player, and even the same with body is this ball is already out and body hasn't even turned yet. So Get your, uh, get your hips down. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, get they, your feet they, settled and move. 
a couple steps slow here and that's all it takes in the NFL, a couple steps yep. slow and it's a first down. So, um, yeah, let's look at play two, a little better uh, variation of, of passing and, and finding what's in front of you. So just like Carolina game coach, right, they're going to bring a uh, extra DB and rotate to cover two. Walk me through it. Yeah, so so like we said, I mean, really, this is almost the essentially same blitz we saw against Carolina. You're still going to get your cover two out of a deep uh, – excuse me, out of a corner rolling back and a safety rolling over. Um, you're going to get your blitzer off the boundary side. This time it's not going to be the corner. He'll play a hard cover two. And I think it's Jabril, which, of course, we know had a great game Saturday night. But um, – Jannard is the, uh, the the hook curl down here, and this this looks better. This looks more like what he did against Carolina, getting getting his drop, getting his feet settled under him, getting his hips down, and uh, breaking break making a good break and making the tackle. And uh, we we line up with this second and second and twelve ish. I mm -hmm. think is what we see here. So yeah, this this is more in line with with what we we've seen. I think. Yeah, I'm with you. The uh, it's it's more decisiveness. Nice, still spot dropping and um, those sorts of things. But it's a nice job of feeling what's coming into your area. Look, like, look, at, his, look yeah. at his knee bend when he when he sets. If you take it back to when he starts to change direction, and I was he hoping can, we could see it from the end zone view a little better. But it's going to black us out. Yeah, we'll go back. But his but his butt's down. His shoulders are over his toes. He's got a forward lean, even though he was just moving backwards. And that's that's that split second, those extra inches you need to break on this stuff. Yeah, I agree. It's a good play. Yeah, I think we've seen tackle. we've seen more of this from him than the you know than the previous play we saw before. It's a it's a tough challenge. I mean, you know, as as a as a guy, I think they drafted out of Memphis to be a situational twenty snaps a game rush end. I think. He's had to adjust his course, right? Uh, and and they're with Christian Kirksey out. They've used him in different routes and, and different responsibilities, dropping him a bit more because they want to use varied looks, like bringing Peppers off the weak side and using that sort of deception, or should say off the strong side, and using the deception of dropping Avery. So it's going to be a challenge for him. I think these are really good reps for him in terms of his future, right? I, I think he's yeah. going to – he has an elite tool to be a rush in it. He's, the the he's fact made, that they can drop him to the yeah. field. I mean, a lot of times you try to hide that defense end as a drop end to the boundary, mm -hmm. less space and all. I mean, the fact that they can drop him to the field and count on him to maintain leverage like this one, stay on the back hip, force him out to the curl flat defender, um, make open field tackles. I mean, that that's going to speak volumes for him as he grows and improves here in the next year or two. Yeah, it's a valuable tool. I think that they'll be able to take advantage of for a long time because he's he can come off the edge with with a sort of fierce uh, ability to get upfield, but then change direction. If you watch this game, there are a couple times he changes direction to make a play on Keenum as he tries to evade the pocket, and uh, he's a valuable part. He's a valuable part of the Browns' defense, and as they find health at the linebacker position the next uh, into next year, and he can play more of that situational twenty five uh, or so snaps as a rush end and. They can use a little bit of this mixture stuff with him. He's only going to get better. So, Coach, hey, man, thanks for joining me. We'll uh, we'll certainly get back again a couple more times this year, guys, uh, to look at some sort of positional player or scheme the Browns are using defensively. If you ever have any questions, uh, ask me on Browns Film Breakdown at Browns Film BDN. Any questions or topics you guys want covered or in the comments of this video, let me know, let Coach know, and we'll be able to get the – you know, get it talked about. We want to eventually, the, the, the big point of this whole thing is to uh, educate and give you some sort of enlightenment about what's going on with the Browns. So, um, Coach, thanks for joining me, buddy. Hey, no problem. All right, guys, we'll be back uh, later this week with something on Mayfield. And uh, as usual, go Browns. <laughs>